Hi friends, so it's Friday and I want to make a video. I don't have anything that I've finished recently that I can talk to you about because I've been reading for the booktube prize that I'm judging. So in lieu of making a Friday Reads video, I thought I'd make a kind of tag video, but I'm going to do it timed. So I was watching Greg from another bibliophile reads do this tag. It's called the Count to 10 with me book tag and it has 10 prompts, 10 10 books that you're supposed to show and I thought instead of just me picking up the book and showing it to you I'd actually show you where the books are on my shelves and one of the books this might be interesting because one of the books that I was thinking about um, is it's in a place that I, I probably shouldn't show you but I'm gonna show you anyway because that's why we're here so yeah life update um, my daughter is home today because I took her to school and I had to go back and get her. She's not feeling well. She woke up this morning and she was crying. She woke up um, early because I was about to go get her, but she woke up herself and she was, she was crying out for mommy. And I said, all right, it's day five. She'd never been to school before. And her first week is a five day week. And the first two days that she was in school, they were there half a day because that's the school policy. The first two days that the kids go in, they're only there for half a day. Go get them at 12.30. And so it's a little bit of an ease into the system. But on, on Wednesday, the first day that she was there all day, I was like, wow, how's this going to go? Because my daughter had never been to daycare. I was always with her. She was always with me. <laughs> she's, al she's always been with me. I remember Eve when I was in the hospital with her, I was like, can you guys uh, just take her for a few, mo a few, a couple of hours, let me get her some rest. And they're like, no, she's yours, you keep her. And it's fine, right? <laughs> I love it. I love her. But she's always with me is what I'm saying. And this week has been a little bit of a stress for her, I think. Last week, she had a little bit of a cold and she got over it, thankfully, so she could start school on Monday. But I guess maybe there's a little bit of a resi residual effect so she may have developed a little bit of an ear infection so this morning she was like really not feeling great i could tell she was crying but i said you know it might just be the build-up school is feeling a little overwhelming but she'll probably feel better when she goes right i'm not a bad parent for doing this right so i took her to school and she was fine by the time we got there by the time we got there she was fine took it took they took her temperature because that's one of the things that they do, I guess, post COVID. When we get there, they take her temperature, they take mine and they let us go to her classroom. She got settled in. She took out the toys. She started playing. She was fine. She did ask me to stay, but it's like, I can't stay. I didn't want to disrupt the program. So I left and I came home and within about an hour and a half, the teacher sent a text telling me, um, She's still not feeling so great and she seems like she's developed a little bit of a fever. So maybe I want to come get her and take her to the doctor. Um, I tried to get an appointment at the pediatrician, but I couldn't, not until tomorrow. And I guess maybe that's because they're like, okay, wait and see. So right now she's taking a nap, which is why I'm here chatting with you guys. But I think she's fine. I think she's fine. Her ear hurts and... I spoke with our family, the doctor in our family. <laughs> My sister-in-law is a doctor and she's also a parent. Um, her daughter is just a, a few months older than my daughter. So we have a lot of the same things happening. And she said, you know, it may just be residual effect from the cold that she had. So we're gonna try some try some things if she's still having the pain later but for now she's resting she may be a little she may have been a little sleep deprived because she's been getting up earlier than she's used to and not wanting to go to bed um not wanting to go to bed at night but hopefully when she wakes up from her nap she'll be much better um yeah <laughs> my baby so this talking with you guys about books is what calms me so indulge me so yeah we're here for the timed version of the count to 10 book tag so here are the 10 prompts first prompt is to show you the first book in a series and this is where I was gonna show you let me think let me think if I have another book that would qualify first book in a series 
maybe. All right, so here, here, here we go. Laura gave me these books. We read, we read one of them for the Run Right Reads Book Club last. Oh yeah, here it is. This is the first in the series. Ah, so I don't actually have to go show you the embarrassing book stack. So this is the Havana series by Leonardo de Perdura. Oh, I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> so this is the Havana series by Leonardo de Perdura. We read one of these books for the Run Right Reads Book Club. Uh, late last year, I think we read Havana Red. So there's Havana Gold and Havana Blue and there's another color, but I'm not sure. So yeah, this is the first book in a series. Ah, and I did it. And I didn't have to go to the book stack. All right, so that's the, oh, did I mention? This is the count to 10 with me tag. There are 10 prompts. Each one of them will go in ascending order. One, two, three, four, going up to 10 things about a book. So that's the first book in a series. Now next is to show you two copies of the same book. Two copies of the same book. I have I have two copies of Jojo Moe's Me Before You. I bought this one when it was first released. I really enjoyed it. And when the author came to do a book signing to promote the movie adaptation of the book, I met her as well as the actress. Um, what was her name? Emilia Clark. Amelia Clark, I met her, and I think both of them signed this book. Yeah, they both signed the book, so that's why I still have two copies of this book. I really enjoyed this first book. Oh, this is also the first book in a series. Um, I mean, I, yeah, it is a series. Jojo Moyes, she wrote Me Before You, she wrote After You, she wrote Still Me. Those are three books in this series. So yeah, look at me having books in series. I don't read a lot of series, although I should say, I just posted a picture on my Instagram today where I'm reading. My current read is, well, one of my current reads is Anything is Possible by Elizabeth Strout. And that is more of the Lucy Barton series. Elizabeth Strout wrote Olive Kitteridge, which also has a series. Um, but I didn't realize that there were more of the Lucy Barton books. So I started reading Anything is Possible just because I wanted to read more from this author. And then I'm finding out that here's Lucy Barton as a character in this book as well. So yeah, books and series, look at me. So that was prompt one and prompt two. Here is prompt three. Oh, I said I was going to time this right, but yeah. Uh, I can't. Um, <laughs> next is three colors on the cover. All right, so I have a book right here that's just on the table that has a lot of colors. This has, this lady is wearing a lot of things and there are flowers in the background. So there's, there are lots of colors on that cover. So let's go with that. Next, oh, and this is The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James, which I pulled out because I bought this copy a few months ago and I'm considering reading it for Victober, but man, this print is really small, but I also think it may be a little bit manageable because maybe I just convinced myself of that because I wanted to buy another book in this same series. More on that in an upcoming video where I talk about my Victober uh, plans. So yeah, prompt number four is four or more perspectives in a book. Four or more perspectives. Um, I'm going to say, okay, Small Island does that. Small Island does that, right? We get perspectives from Gilbert, from Hortense, and more of Gilbert, let me see. Queenie. And I think there's at least one more. 
Bernard. Yeah. So Small Island by Andrea Levy has at least four perspectives reading from the viewpoint of all these different characters and seeing a little bit more of the backstory of why this book is as hilarious as it is. Patrice, Doris and Heidi, I owe you guys a check in. Like we were kind of buddy reading this book um, in June <laughs> and I just kind of disappeared on the group chat. I'm sorry, guys. I'm using this as my way to profoundly and sincerely apologize for disappearing. There was just a lot happening. Forgive me. Forgive me. Caribathon kind of took over in June. And a lot of the other things that I planned to do, like actually check in with my friends on Buddy Reads, didn't happen. But yeah, thanks, you guys, for continuing to be my friend, even though I flaked. Um... Problem number five, a five star read. This is a five star read. Um, I have this lying around there. Eyes are watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. This is a five star read. Other books that I have read um, that I absolutely love and would never stop talking about five star reads. I really liked The Known World by Edward P. Jones. I read this a few years back, did a buddy read of this with a group on Voxer, and it was fantastic. The Known World by Edward P. Jones, really, really loved this. Another book that I would say is a five-star read was one of my favorite books from last year, one of my favorite nonfiction books, was this book, Her Honor by Doris Hazard Cordell. This is a memoir of a woman who is a judge, California Superior Court, and she was the first black woman to serve in this capacity and this was a little bit about her life on the bench some of the cases that were interesting standout cases in her in her experience and a little bit of what she continues to work on as an activist even after she retired from from the judge from being a judge so yeah this was a five star read for sure and i'd love more people to check this book out really would then prompt number six, six or more short stories, short stories. Do I have a short story collection over here? Yeah, for sure. Short story collection, one of my favorites of all time, Interpreter of Maladies by Jhumpa Lahiri. This won her the Pulitzer. Yeah, it's been a while since I read this collection, and so I can't remember all the stories. I actually don't remember most of them, but the ones that I do remember, the characters have stuck with me over the years. So I may need to reread this sometime soon. <laughs> but yeah, this has several stories. I don't remember now how many, but it's definitely more than six. Seven on the cover, a book with the number seven on the cover. I may need... Oh, okay. So I didn't even have to move. I mean... It has the word seven, not the letter or, or the number, the numeral. It doesn't have the numeral seven, but it has the word seven, Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. This, of course, won Marlon James the Booker Prize, and he was the first Jamaican man to do so. This happened in 2015, and we're hoping that me, I'll be the next Jamaican to win the Booker, the first Jamaican woman. Wouldn't that be something? More on that later. <laughs> <laughs> Problem number eight. Eight letters in the title. Okay, um, let's think about that. Okay, this has eight letters in the title. Wolf Hall by Hilary Bantel. Do I have to pull this down? W-O-L-F-H-A-L-L. -L -L. Wolf Hall. Eight letters in the title. Um, I'm being lazy by not picking it up, but you, you could see it. Problem number nine. Book where... The page last. <laughs> Problem number nine. The book ends on a page number that ends in the number nine. All right. So let's see if we can find one. Yeah. This ends on 229. <laughs> First book I picked up. The last numbered page. Now, that's a little bit weird because, you know, there's acknowledgments. And the author page behind that and when you go on goodreads or you go on amazon um, when you go on the online links to this book you'll see that the number the page number online 
usually has way more pages than the numbers that are in the book. But for the purpose of this experiment, the last numbered page in this book is 229. There we go. 229. So that's, that's that prompt. And the last prompt, 10 books in the series. Okay. Um, I don't have any of those like chapter books up here. Do I? I don't think so. 10 books in the series, but my husband, this is my husband's shelf on this side, even though I've claimed most of it, but, but yeah, he has some Hardy Boys books and there are lots of books in the series. Like you can see this one here is number 44. So that's my response to the count to 10 with me book tag. I hope you enjoyed this video, a little bit of a chat, a little bit of just like hanging out with me on a day where I need a little bit of book therapy. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and until we come back with another one, happy reading, enjoy your books, happy weekend, happy everything, bye. <laughs>